Hey everybody, a little while ago I did a video on dynamic range and how you should think about it and the ways that you should uh, try to utilize it. And uh, I didn't so much talk about what it was and also I mentioned noise floor. So today in this video we're going to talk about what noise floor and dynamic range are um, if you haven't really heard of them yet. <laughs> Alright, so let's start with noise floor. Noise floor is the amount of noise you have relative to the amount of signal that you have. Now what is noise? Noise is anything that you don't want. So it doesn't have to be static or wind or popping or anything like that. It's just any frequencies that you don't want in your signal. So the way it works is the cumulative effect. If you record anything the microphone hears all the frequencies on either side of the main thing that you want. And whatever you're recording does possess some amount of some of those unwanted frequencies also. So let's take, for instance, uh, acoustic guitar. If we're recording a, a single acoustic guitar, there will be some amount of 8, 10, 12,000 hertz recorded in that. Now, we don't necessarily want a ton of that. That would be wispy, whistly stuff, right? But let's say we record 20 acoustic guitar tracks on, e on top of each other. Every time we record, we get more signal, and we get more of that that we don't necessarily want. Now, a way around this is that you can cross those out, and you can filter those higher and lower signals out because this is happening on the bottom end also. The problem is there is some amount of that stuff that you're going to want. Now, where this becomes an issue is if the noise relative to the signal is quite high to begin with, then eventually you'll have some signal and a lot of noise and there won't be much room for stuff to go around it. Also, if you just say, well, no big deal, I'll filter those out, well, now your acoustic guitar will start to sound boxier and boxier box here. And this happens with every input that you record. There's no way around it. The best way is to get a well-prepared room and uh, if you have any outboard gear to set it up so that you deal with as much of it as you can with high and low pass filters. And then the next thing is dynamic range. So noise floor and dynamic range tend to go together because dynamic range is, in recorded music, is what we're going to talk about the difference between the quietest stuff and the loudest stuff. And in recorded music, as we talked about in the other video, you only have so much due to the medium that you're recording on, the speakers that you're playing it through, the stuff you recorded it with. So, you can't have stuff just mouse whisper quiet next to stuff this jet engine loud. It won't work. We don't have enough room in recording music to really do that. And then, you know, in the other video I got into why would you want to do that. So here's a way that it can be a problem too. Let's say that you have a big track and it has 60 tracks in it, okay? Your chorus section has 30 tracks, so it's this big old multi-track thing. And then all of a sudden you want the bridge section to just be, say, solo piano and vocal. You may say, well this will be the quieter portion of the song. It can be, if you have to have it that way. But what you'll find is as you go to turn those things down for that section, they will start to get lost relative to the other section in like the, the sizzle, the hiss, the hum that you'll have as you, get, as you make that contrast between the loud part and the quiet part, that's because the noise floor on the loud part, because there's 30 tracks of it, is nearly louder than, this, than the signal of your little two tracks. Because that's 30 times that we've stacked up noise versus two times that we've stacked up noise. I hope that helps. I hope that makes sense. Um, the way, to, the way to deal with this is to take your quiet section and use 
the timbre of the thing to change the dynamics rather than the actual volume. I'll do another video on that idea, but so often people think, well, okay, the song should slow down or it should get quieter, and really they just want it to present less energy. We're already limited by things like our noise and our overall dynamic range. So you have to come up with other ways to do this. And one of the ways that I always say is like, well, look, if we take out all the drums, it will have less energy and it will seem quieter or softer or less aggressive. So those are the kind of things that you want to be looking for. Anyway, I hope that helped to explain dynamic range. That's the difference between the loudest stuff and the quietest stuff. And noise floor, which is the cumulative effect of recording stuff. Anyway, I hope that made some terms clear. We're going to do more videos like this in the future. Leave some comments and let me know what you'd like them to be on. Also, like and subscribe for more videos coming soon.